The MISC tab under Settings provides miscellaneous settings regarding how the shop operates, how information is gathered from your customers, and how the terms of agreement is displayed. Off the top, you have this box for disabling Ajax. Ajax is the dynamic function on the site that allows the shopping cart to reload without reloading the page. If for some reason the shopping cart is not working or if you encounter weird problems with reloading on the pages, you can try checking this box and disabling Ajax and see if that fixes the problem. It's rare, but it does happen. Next, you can choose to redirect to checkout immediately after someone clicks on an item to add it to the cart. If you think people are only going to buy one product from your site, this is probably a good idea. But if you have multiple products and you expect people to buy more than one product at a time, I would leave this unchecked. You can disable live credit card validation by checking this box. The live credit card validation is when you punch in the credit card number, it'll actually check whether or not this is a valid credit card number. That doesn't mean it contacts the credit card agency to make sure that the number is actually a real credit card. What it does is checks whether or not it looks like a credit card number, meaning if you enter more or less numbers than necessary, it'll tell you. The next box is one I would check. It disables guest checkout, meaning anyone who buys a product has to sign up for an account. And this is a really good idea because this is a download and chances are every now and again, you'll find people who mess up the actual download or something else goes wrong. That way, if you force them to set up an account, they'll be able to log back in and check the download later and also get things like the receipt and all that kind of stuff. If you check this, you should also check the next one, show register login form. This allows people to either register or log in if they're existing users when they get to the checkout page. That way, you don't have to have them log in first and then go to the checkout. They just go to checkout and then they can automatically log in. Download link expiration is an interesting one. When you sell downloads, you want to limit how long it can take from the purchases made to the person can actually download it to avoid people cheating the system and getting extra downloads. By default, it's set to 24 hours, meaning after 24 hours, the customer can no longer download the product unless you specifically let them do so, but you can change this to any value you want. This is counted in hours, so you have to figure out how many hours you want to extend it for, or you can also shorten it to just a few hours if you want to. At the bottom here, you can disable re-download so that people can only download the product once. Enabling this box is controversial in my opinion. I've experienced this several times where I've bought a product online and then as I download it, something happens. Either the site times out or my computer gets disconnected or something like that. The logical thing for me to do then is go back, log back in and try to download the product again. But if you've checked this box, then I wouldn't be able to download again, even if the download wasn't completed the first time. And I would have to contact the site owner and say, hey, it didn't work. I have to re-download it again. Can you reactivate it? So I would leave this unchecked. The next options here have to do with terms of agreement. And here I'm going to show you a little trick. First of all, you should always check this box to make sure people have to agree to the terms when they buy something from your store. This is fairly standard and it's a way of protecting yourself from weird legal issues happening once people buy products from you. Now that you've checked this, you of course need actual terms of agreement. And if you remember, off the top of this course, I said you needed to create a separate page for that. So if we go to the site, you'll see under legal, I have a terms and conditions page, which is basically the same thing. So here, I'm going to be clever. Instead of typing in the terms of agreement here, I'm simply going to make a link to them. And that way it won't cluster up the checkout page. First, I have to set the label that's going to go next to the terms checkbox. So I'll say agree to terms and conditions. And then I'm going to say, read the full terms and conditions for hunger guides. And then I'll make the terms and conditions into a link pointing to the actual page. So here I can find my page, click open link in new window and click add link. That way we're not clustering up our entire checkout page with lots of information. We're just pointing people to the terms and conditions page and then they click on the link and jump to it. At the very bottom, you can change the complete purchase text and also the add to cart text. 
By default, the buttons say complete purchase and add to cart, but if you want to, you can change them to something else. This would be useful if you are making an international store, so it's not in English or for some other reason. By default, you already have text there, but you can change it using these boxes. After making all the changes, remember to click Save Changes, and the changes are applied. When you sell products online, it's always prudent to have a proper Terms and Conditions page so your customers know what they are agreeing to when they purchase a product, and you know you're covered legally when something goes wrong. This is especially important when you're selling digital products or virtual services because it's harder to show that a customer in fact obtained something in return for their financial transaction. It is better if you overdo things on this tab than not do it at all.